And uh, so moving along, there's been a lot of other DVD releases uh, this this time of year for around Halloween. I'm going to start with uh, one of the eight Ghost House Underground pictures that was released, Dark Floors, which fe- features the Finnish band Lordy, which uh, I talked about in episode two of the movie morgue. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Um, Dark Floors, it was a decent monster flick. Um, I'd, I'd watch it again, and I probably will watch it again. Uh, I just wish they would have shown more of Lordy, because I think I felt like we kind of got skimped on them in the movie. And the ending, I'm not going to blow it, but it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it kind of did if you go on a stretch, but it left a lot unanswered, and sometimes that's good. I just didn't like the way they handled it in this particular movie. But it wasn't bad. Next is the remake of Herschel Gordon Lewis, Lewis's, uh, also known as the Appalachian Godfather of Gore. His, uh, or not his remake, but a remake of his movie, Wizard of Gore, featuring uh, Crispin Glover as Montag the Magnificent. This movie also happens to feature Brad Dorif and Jeffrey Combs. And uh, you would never know that it's Jeffrey Combs because he happens to play a bum in this movie and it doesn't really look much like him. Uh, phenomenal performances by everyone in this movie. Uh, this movie also features the Suicide Girls. Uh, there's a lot of boobies in this movie, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but boobies and, and uh, performances aside, this movie was awesome. Check it out if, uh, if you get the chance. And on to the new DVD release of Pumpkinhead. Uh, for those of you that do not know, Stan Winston, Winston has recently passed on. Uh, which he, one of his last great efforts was designing the Iron Man suit for the Marvel comic movie Iron Man. And uh, he also happened to design the creature for uh, the original Pumpkinhead movie. Very cool creature. Uh, it's the draw to the whole movie. This uh, movie plays out kind of like a folky, gothic, modern fairy tale. Uh, and uh, that's why I really enjoy the film. The set pieces and the atmosphere is really cool. The creature is cool, the lighting effects are cool, and the scenery is cool. I, uh, classic monster movie, I really enjoyed it. On to Love Me Deadly. This movie's been around since the 70s, I think the early 70s. Deals with uh, necrophilia. Very creepy movie for its time. Uh, it's a good movie. Um, not one of my absolute favorites, but I'm going to watch it again. Uh, just because of the storyline and the tension between the characters and it kind of tiptoes around the subject matter in some spots and then other spots it deep it digs right into it and uh, that's why I think makes this movie so creepy and the actors t- took their roles very seriously in this film again adding to the creepiness factor uh, I picked up Jack Brooks Monster Slayer um, it's kind of a blind buy at Best Buy because it was on sale for half price and it looked kind of interesting, and for for seven bucks, this movie is definitely worth it. Uh, even for you know maybe even fourteen, fifteen bucks, I you know I'd still say it's probably worth it. Uh, it's definitely a different take on the monster movie, uh, and it was different. That's what I liked about this movie. It was different. This movie uh, also has Robert England in it, from uh, more popularly known as Freddy Krueger, uh, and this is probably his best performance since. Uh, I'm going to say Nightmare on Elm Street Part uh, 3, even. Uh, so if you like Robert England and uh, you're just looking for something different, check out Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer. It's worth your time and money. On to something that, uh, much like this this film was directed by Uwe Boll, who did House of the Dead and uh, Postal and a slew of other movies that, oh, Blood Rain, he did the Blood Rain movie. Uh, a lot of his movies, he gets a lot of flack for uh, being a, a crappy director, which eh, I'm kind of on the fence about it. I think, I like I like some of his movies. His movies are enjoyable, they're fun, uh, and in some ways he's kind of a modern Ed Wood. And I'm sure he would tell me to uh, shut my mouth if uh, he saw this, but you know, much respect for you, Uwe. Keep doing what you're doing. I think you're improving, and this is a kind of a step in the right direction I think the only thing that kind of bothered me well not kind of but really bothered me about this movie is at the beginning there's some footage of animal torture which I couldn't even begin to watch uh, 
All I, all I could kind of tell is it looked like a dog was getting his head cut off and being abused. The On the plus side, uh, part of the proceeds when anyone purchases this movie are going towards PETA as kind of the trade-off for obtaining the footage. So that that's awesome. I'm glad you did that, Uwe. That was a really cool move. Uh, but I feel that the animal torture was just for shock value, and that's what it was. It was pure shock value. That aside, this movie was actually very, very interesting, and I really actually enjoyed the rest of the film from that point on. Uh, I could have used a little work in some spots, uh, but it kind of reminded me of one of my more favorite films, The Anthropophagus Beast by Joe D'Amato. Uh, very cool. Uh, the electric chair scene in this movie is probably the coolest electric chair scene in, in any movie aside from Faces of Death. For those of you who don't, don't know, that scene was also fake in Faces of Death. It's not real. Uh, toothpaste and some goo coming out of some eyes can be very convincing. Don't fall into that trap. Uh, the, however, on, on another side note, the morgue footage and some of the aftermath footage in Faces of Death is actually real, which adds to the street cred of the, oh, you see real people dying. Uh, but that's a whole other segment. On to the last release of this season that I'm going to cover. Dario Argento's Mother of Tears, the third in the Three Mothers trilogy. Also in this trilogy, there's Inferno, which is the second movie, and Suspiria, which was the first movie. All of these movies are phenomenal. If you haven't seen any of them yet, uh, I'm, I'm going to say start with Suspiria, because it's the first, and it makes more sense to progress through this series from the beginning and move your way to The Mother of Tears. Uh, Basically, the Three Mothers trilogy is this. There's three witches in three different cities, one in Germany, one in Rome, and one in New York. And uh, the first one takes place in Germany, which is Suspiria, which I believe is the mother of size. And uh, amazing movie, some of the coolest kill scenes in cinematic history. Uh, the second film is Inferno, which takes place with the mother in New York. Uh, uh, Matsur Tenebranum, The Mother of Darkness, which uh, I, I think Inferno is probably my favorite in the trilogy uh, just because of the way it all plays out and the creepiness factor. Not that I'm running off Suspiria on any right because it's equally as powerful and as good. Mother of Tears, much like uh, since D Dario Argento and George Romero are pretty closely tied together, and in fact, uh, George Romero wrote Dawn of the Dead, the original one, in Rome uh, under Dario. Uh, Dario let him live in Rome in an apartment and helped him out and showed him around and kind of held his hand in Rome. It's very cool. So the two are kind of linked together. They, Much like um, Romero's more current works, they're, they're very good, but they're not like the classics. Uh, it's very amazing. Um, a very great movie, one of the better movies I've seen in a while, uh, but still, it's not Suspiria, it's not Inferno, but it was a good close to the trilogy, and uh, I was happy to see that. I really enjoyed this movie, and I can't wait to watch it again. That about wraps it up for this segment of the Movie Morgue, this installment of the Movie Morgue. Um, so, uh, hopefully, I will do some more of these during the week as I'm on vacation and have some extra free time. Uh, and uh, if I don't see you before then, have a happy and frightful and safe Halloween. Uh, both the trick-or-treaters going door-to-door -door and the uh, people handing out the candy. Uh, enjoy your holiday. And I know I will. I'll be sitting at home watching movies and handing out candy to trick-or-treaters. So have a happy Halloween, and I'll see you next time.